Chapter 14, Dancing. Now, I really want to be clear here that while you can have a good time at dances, there are, they are, for the most part, the largest waste of time and money a school is capable of spending on the student body. They are the preeminent place to acquire illicit substances and sexual partners afterwards, and either maximize the chances of bad decisions or amplify the social anxiety and awkwardness of those too uncool for the rest of the student population to actually, actually dance with. That said, they're still fun. And fun beats staring at the same three channels on rural television with my mom or the ceiling of the room with my thoughts. So I went. Jay picked me up for the winter formal, wearing an uncharacteristically clean white shirt and tie that was, that was tied in an honest attempt at a half Windsor knot, but a failure nonetheless. I want a clean pair of black denim slacks and a blue short sleeve shirt, black skinny tie and freshly cleaned high tops. My attempt at edgy chic, I guess. I straightened his neckwear and we hopped into his truck, a three-seat bench that I knew would fill by the time we got there with Kylie. How her parents let her go to these dances was beyond me. But then again, they let her date Jay in the first place, which, man, it must be to make sure Jay would get his tie on straight. The winter formal was kind of the bookend to the first semester, with the week of school after exams for review and housekeeping. Classes were mandatory, but not graded, so the dance was kind of a concession to make the time worthwhile. I wondered if Sarah was going to be there, but I didn't want to look like the desperate third wheel on this date. I hoped that I was at least a mosh pit or some kind of classic based, of some sort of music based trouble. But they were not high hopes given the amount of plaid and camo I saw on a regular basis at the school. But they were still there. Earlier in the week, I had forgotten to pack a lunch and waited too long to get into the giant line for Mexi Fries. I wandered down to a corner store that a few of the students had mentioned and found, along with a can of Coke and Doritos, my first glimmer of this hope. This country gas station slash corner store that sold all your essentials like canned beans, jerky, live bait, and ammo had a lonely subscription to Thrasher magazine. There were skateboarders here. Why else would they stock the magazine? A magazine marketed solely for the benefit of skateboarders. In hindsight, it could have been part of some promotional package that the store bought along with Guns and Ammo Monthly and Cosmo. But the, but the date was only a month off, so it was new. There was hope. So I went to the dance, hoping to get some punk rock played, and see if anyone else moshed. Any skaters in the school, they're probably recluse due to a life of unskatable road surfaces, like I was, and might only be coaxed out of hiding with the songs of our people. Punk and skateboarding have always gone together in the Toronto scene, so I was a decently safe bet that would be the same here. That's not to say you couldn't ride a drain pool or on an acreage somewhere, listening to Merle Haggard. I imagine there's a small niche to fill. As we walked to the front entrance of the school, my suspicions were more or less shattered and confirmed in a sad, twangy sound of country music was being played over the inadequately rented speakers in the cafeteria. Sigh. Between what must have been country music's greatest hits and relatable wedding songs, along with the newest and arguably lamest pop songs on the radio, almost no rock or punk crossed the DJ's decks. My hopes fizzled as a real reason I came to show up alone was just in time to re revive it. Sarah must have driven herself. She peered over the throng of dancing teenagers, hoping to find that she, someone she knew, and must have seen Jay and Kylie across the dance floor from me. She was wearing a wine red dress, a dark gray scarf shawl type thing, and she was pretty. Not just cute girl down the road pretty. Her hair and makeup were done perfectly, accented her natural beauty. She was noticeably, she noticeably wanted to look good, and she did look good. Dear Lord, did she ever look good. I was probably staring at her like she hated, but still. As she made her way around the foyer and down the long ramp to the cafeteria, a slow song started playing on the floor, and the floor simultaneously got easier to cross because everyone on it was paired up to sway to the song, but harder to navigate without looking like some creep dancing by himself. As I got to the middle of the slow-moving herd of couples, I saw Tony pull her into his arms, and it looked like they were dancing together. She looked surprised but had enough of a smile on her face that I thought twice about trying to talk to her or interrupt. I just like looked uninterested and made my way past them to the bathrooms. The music echoed in the bathrooms, with only the lowest bass making it clearly through the cinder block walls. I splashed some water on my face and stared into my reflection. You don't belong here, stupid, I said to myself, or maybe the reflection of me said it to me. Either of us Either way, one of us was right. And this wasn't our music, these weren't our friends, Sarah wasn't our girlfriend, not like we would ever have the balls to ask her out anyway. I splashed some more water on my face one more time, drying it off with some paper towel and made my way back to Jay and Kylie's dancing spot. And on my way, I felt the hand reach through my arm, uh, right, right arm and side, and grab my tie. I spun around and found Sarah was holding the tie. Hey, study buddy, she said, pulling me back into the middle of the floor. 
I followed because, hey, if a pretty girl is pulling you somewhere by your neck, you, you follow. Saw you dance with Tony, I asked. Ugh, don't remind me, she said, rolling her eyes. So why the change, though? I yelled over the music, backed off, uh, then backed off as the song faded out. A fast beat began to play over the speakers, followed by a subtle, if not noticeable, cheer from the students. There's no change. I'm here to dance, she said, smiling and bouncing with the beat, while still holding and pulling me into the crowd with my tie. What are you here for? I wanted to explain that my skateboard magazine-related mosh pit plan, but damn if she didn't look good and worth shutting up for for dancing with. Her body, her body effortlessly moved through the music, something I noticed every high school dance I'd ever been to. A guy can look good dancing with a girl or a crowd, but not by himself, whereas a girl could probably dance the socks off any said guy. Her dress was just tight enough to show her hips and curves. It moved how her hips and curves moved, flowing enough to add to say it said movement. And the tie. High school aged guys currently reading this book. A tie is the best part of going to a formal dance, dance with a girl you like. There's something dangerously attractive about the way a girl can drag you to the dance floor with a silk noose that you probably had your mother help tie you a few hours before. It's sexy and smooth. And there's no manly equivalent to the actions of a girl pulling you towards the fun like this so suit up when you get the chance fellas the music continued to boom and we both continued to bounce with a small comedic interruptions from jay and some of sarah's other friends as we moved to the music halfway through the song though her face changed to something bordering on terror as she pushed past me on her way to the ramp i tried to follow but her crowds but the crowds were still enjoying the latest song over their bobbing heads i saw her nearly collide with tony and the girl i had seen him with the other day before they seemed to be screaming at each other, but the blonde girl at Sarah, def but the blonde girl and Sarah definitely were doing it more. I wasn't close enough to hear any of it before I could get through the crowds, and she and the girl left a very dejected Tony and made their way to the door. They got outside about the same time I finally passed Tony. A death glare showed up between us, and he let me pass easily enough. I half ran up the ramp to the doors and squinted into the darkness as I got outside. Sarah, I called out, not knowing what she drove in, not knowing where she was going. There was a couple of cars either coming in late to the dance or leaving, moving about the parking lot. We were having so much fun. What on earth could Tony and his girlfriend have done that could have, that have A, made them leave, or B, made her so angry or scared? Thoughts like these can leave you generally obsessed and unprepared for what usually follows the third element of most high school dances. Fights. Chapter 14. Hope you guys liked it. The link is in the description below and we'll talk to you guys later.